Today is August 22nd, time for another Buoy 10 update. And today is day two of the Coho Rodeo. And today we had a lot better conditions, although the wind did pick up and was pretty gnarly here down below the bridge. That west wind came due west, so we couldn't even hide from it up over at Shipwreck, or usually you can hide from that northwest wind. So uh, today we had to deal with the wind, but it was not until about probably 12, 31 o'clock, which gave us a lot of time to go chase them. And from talking with the fleet, it sounds like there's fish caught all the way down at Ilwaco. Uh, red line sound like uh, maybe a few fish caught there, but honestly, I only talked to one or two guys who fished it. Checkerboard was kicking out some fish. The Hammond area was kicking out fish. Uh, above the bridge on the Oregon and Washington side, both had a lot of fish too. And for us, we stayed on the Oregon side all throughout the Alco. And then as we hit low slack, we jumped over to the Washington side. And honestly, it didn't matter. There were fish loaded up everywhere. Uh, we probably had at least 20 chances, 20 goes today. We landed, I think, 14, 15 fish, and it was on all hardware, no bait. It was on spinners and on those spin fish. If you can't find the spin fish, actually, I'll come back to that. We'll talk about spin fish here in just a second. Um, so going back to, to the report. So we had everything on hardware, no bait whatsoever, and we ended up keeping three coho. We lost a fourth coho that was definitely a hatchery right next to the boat. A sea lion came up and just ate it right before we can get it in the net. Too bad. Um, but hey, that's part of the game down here, especially when there's a lot fewer boats. Those sea lions key in on the boats that are still around and they hang with you the whole time during your troll. You hook up and you gotta get them in quick. So it was tough. Uh, so today our coho still came on the bottom 30, 40, 50 feet of water, digging dirt on the Alco and the Inca. So our usual program of fishing 15, 20, 25 on the counters, real shallow for these fish. Uh, they might be there, but I kept marking fish down deep, so I just put them all down, and that's where we ended up getting our coho. So, good day again today, but we need a few more hatchery coho, that's all. All in all, I mean, you really cannot complain about a day where you get 15, 20, 25, 30 opportunities. Don't forget about springer fishing. Well, you go out there and you grind all day long for one or two bites at best, and we are ecstatic if we get one or two fish in the boat. Here we put a dozen, 15 fish in the net and we kept three. Awesome, it's fantastic. Great day, lots of fun. So uh, i have been getting a lot of questions about the spin fish. You know, the best thing to do is reach out to your local retailer. They just came out this year at ICAST, which is the big industry show that takes place in Florida. And that's when they were released by Yakima Bait. So the best thing to do is reach out to your local retailer and ask them if they have it or if they have it on order get their ETA and that's the best way to go about doing it. So uh, what we've been doing with those spin fish, since I have five or six of them, is we've been stuffing them with fish nip. And if you don't have any spin fish, you can use the Brad Super Baits as well. But what I've been doing is using that fish nip and I know that I work with Pro Cure. I know that they sponsor the TV show, but I'm telling you the fish nip truly does work and it's because I work with them on developing it to create a better bait than what we use with that canned tuna. What I don't like about the canned tuna is that it's cooked, it's washed out, and that's why the color is all white. Albacore tuna meat is not white to begin with. When it gets cooked out, it turns that ghost white, and that's when all of the good stuff has been washed out. So what Procure did is they went out and took that fish nip and found a way to stabilize it, and when you open it up, you actually can see all the sinew still in there. It's all actual meat. They put it through a grinder and then stabilize it, add a bunch of uh, bite stimulants and aminos and all sorts of other good stuff to it. And then they vacuum seal it inside that little tub. In fact, actually, one second, I got it right here. All right, I'm back. So then they just vacuum seal it inside this little package right here, and that keeps it good for a long time and I actually always keep this in my boat for you know emergency purposes but this one package will last me about five or six days running six rods so ten bucks goes a long ways and it is stabilized you can actually leave it in your boat for several days on end and it'll be just fine but what I personally like to do is I take the fish nip out I put it in a little tub and then I add some of that uh, sardine tuna Dunkin' sauce to it. I've really become a big fan of that stuff. It's just super oily, real heavy stuff. You can also use some of the bait oils and sauces that Procure has. Dump a bunch of that stuff into the tub and I'll show you again.
Sorry, sorry, sorry. Keep running around. Okay. Um, and then when you get it all done, the consistency of it almost looks like Play-Doh. And that stuff will last a long time. So unlike the canned tuna that washes out real quick, you got to trade it out every, you know, pass or two, every 15, 20 minutes. I will leave that stuff in the super bait, in the spin fish for pass after pass. As long as it stays in there, there's a ton of scent. When you put it in there, especially when you add some of the other stuff to it, you can flavor it up however you like, but when you run it, you can actually see the oil slick coming off of it. And it's all because Pro Gear figured out a way to stabilize that raw tuna and turn it into a good solid bait that we can use in our super baits and in our spin fish. So uh, again, if you're looking for a spin fish, they just came out, they're shipping them. Call your local retailer, best way to do it. For fish nip, everybody has fish nip. All the local retailers carry it, so just pick it up and order it. Fish Field has it. If you're not in the area, they can, Fish Field can actually ship it to you. Um, so I think right now, let's see, we cover the report. Uh, yeah, actually the ocean. So I've been getting a few questions about that. The ocean has been pretty lumpy, pretty rough. If it was calmer, we'd probably jump out there, see if we can't find a few more coho but supposedly it's supposed to start laying down this weekend and we're hoping to get out Saturday, Sunday right in there. And I don't know, we'll just kind of wait and see. I currently have Sunday and Monday open and I might try and keep those open because I kind of want to go tuna fishing. <laughs> we'll see if the ocean lays down enough for that. If not, we'll be back here in the river or out there in the ocean chasing coho. All right guys, we'll see you guys tomorrow, hopefully with another great report. It's a lot of fun down here. It was a ghost town, there's nobody here and the fish are biting. Come on down and have fun. Later.